All right. So industrial cannabis in Costa Rica. The fantastic plant, fantastico. What is the first thing you think of when you look at a potato? So when you think of a potato, what's the first thing you think of? Potato chips, papa frita, risotto. Does anybody think of what is uh, what another product that potatoes make? Vodka. How many people thought vodka when they saw potatoes? Zero. Okay. It's because the word associated with it is not necessarily what we think of. But when you say the word cannabis, what do we think? We think, ah, marijuana, la droga, medicina, right? But it's, it's more than that. And that's what this picture here is to show you, right? In this, I've done a mind map that actually demonstrates all the different products you can actually do with cannabis. Cannabis is more than just medicine. It's more than just a drug, right? It's everything else. What a lot of people don't know is 97% of all cannabis grown in Canada is actually for food, comida. It's not recreational, it's not medicinal. That's the other little small part of the big problem, right? Everything else, cannabis is everything else, not just a drug. And that's what this does, that that mind map is for, is to demonstrate all those things it can do. This fresco that you see here, that's from a building in Italy, Bologna. And if you can read it, it says, cannabis protector. No cannabis, no cannabis. Cannabis. This is a very old fresco, right? And you see this word used there, and it went on to demonstrate showing all the things you were doing. And mostly it was for involved in food and other things. But very interesting. So building this hemp, all these different buildings were actually made with hemp in the future, right? In France, for example, right, is going to be structures like this. These, these structures, all municipal buildings are going to require to be built with natural based products. 50%. The largest building in the world made of hemp is this building right there, bottom left hand corner. That is made from hemp. Then you have on the top right, or on the top left, that's the Adnan Brewery in England. Those panels all around the building were made from cannabis. And of course, you have residential buildings and other buildings that are all there. So these buildings all are made from hemp. And it's only just the start. These are some of the things that I do and I commercialize. So in the top right corner, that building that you see red, here, that red is actually a cannabis paint. When I first made this paint, I go to trade shows. I would mix the paint right there in front of everybody. I take my finger and I go, I'll challenge any other paint producer to do this. And I stick my finger in my paint and then I taste it. And uh, I can tell you a lot of people would be more like, Ooh, wow. And that, that there building still is red today as it was when I first painted it. That's over uh, 12 years old. Some of the other products that are out there, for example, these are all hemp based. Okay? So if I go right here in the top middle, Look at that, it's a light switch plate, an accent plate. That is 100% pure cannabis. No other plastic in that, none. There's no PLA, 
There's no PPE. There's no other things in it. That's using pure cannabis science. That's it. It's the same thing in the bottom left-hand corner. You'll look at another piece there. It's a kind of a clear plastic-looking cellophane-type material. That is 100% pure cannabis. That's made from the seed oil and the cellulose both of the plant. I use nothing other than the plant to make it. Right? Right in the middle, we slide it. Of course, everybody knows and talks about that fiber. Right? That's the cottonized cannabis fiber. And that is actually from a food crop. Not actually designed for or grown especially specifically for that fiber. That's from a dual use crop. We grew it for grain as its primary, and then we use the waste that's left, right, to turn it into that. Because 15 years ago, you were going, oh, you can't do that. You can't make fiber from, from a grain crop. It doesn't work. And then I said, oh, yeah, well, we tried it. And that's what we produce. It's just beautiful fiber. And contrary to probably the belief, this can be done commercially at scale. There is equipment out there that you can decorticate, okay, and successfully turn this fiber from the from the farm into usable products. Farm equipment works. So another thing that we're working on, I was working on, is up here in the top left. That is an oil absorbent. Twenty-five times more absorbent than your cat litter or clay that's used. Okay? Or other things that we use industrially today. Okay, this is can be as many times, 15 times greater than some of the best absorbents that we have on the market today. And this is made from cannabis. The other beauty of this thing is I've designed it so that it actually floats on water, or from the water, and it absorbs the oil. Right? It's going to be absorbed, say for an oil spill. Absorbs the oil, take it back, and take it back to the lab, recover that oil, and then recover the absorbent. Go with the second. Bottom right. So this is something, a product I call, is a kind of a carbon foam. If you look at it, it's all four kinds of little holes in it. It's very lightweight, but it's actually quite hard. It's probably a good replacement for, for building walls and these sort of things. That's what I'm kind of looking at doing with it. Right? And of course, the carbon that's in this, right, is actually from hemp. So it's like hempcrete. Hempcrete, right, you take the herb, okay, that's the inside part of the plant, we mix it with lime and we create then and create. That's what made those houses as simple as that. Just lime and herb. Now I've gone a step further and I've created that taking that herb and I carbonize it. And that'll become more clear later. Because I'm looking also at carbon sequestration and stabilizing that carbon for a long period of time. And so this is very lightweight. The beauty of it was I discovered one day I was mixing the ingredients together, and all of a sudden, you know, I had that water. Materials started forming up all by itself, and the carbonization was kind of going on. And then it hardened like that. And I was like, ooh, very interesting. Now, the one right in the middle is, again, pure hemp. The carbon that's from, that's there is actually from cannabis, right? And the fiber that's holding together is also from cannabis. So I use two different parts of it that's all the same part of the plant, but just different ways of turning it from one thing to another, okay? And that is a flexible, conductive kind of paper, okay? So you can think of carbon electronics, or you have jackets, or even clothes, perhaps, you know, I think there's a number of applications that we actually go for that. So, one of my monikers that I really like is, is this one here. First, understand nature in coffee, right? What does that mean? Well, when I first started looking and trying to develop batteries and kind of thing, let me give you another analogy. And, you know, when I look at trees, when I look at cannabis, or any kind of green plant, I start to ask myself, you know, what's happening? What's going on? Well, I started thinking of those as what's, what's going on. So I look at a tree and you say, okay, the leaves are kind of like these little mini silver panels. Right? Because it starts the whole process of photosynthesis, right? And, and CO2, carbon dioxide in the air. So these plants, they collect the energy from the sun, right? 
take the carbon dioxide from the plant, start a process, and then the plant holds on to the carbon to make the tree, the bark, the leaves, the branches, the roots, right? And then releases oxygen, right? It just keeps doing that over and over and over again, and that's how the plant works. So, what is that exactly? You know, it's interesting. Well, that kind of reminds me of something else that we use in daily life every day. Batteries. Right? How does a battery work? Well, batteries take energy, they put it in that kind of thing, and hold it, and then we release it. The tree is exactly the same thing. Remember, like I said, we start, it takes carbon out of the atmosphere, hold on to it, and then it stays there its whole life until it dies, and then it gives it back. And all that kind of energy, if you want, it's actually locked up in there. Carbon is Mother Nature's way of storing energy. If you look at it that way, that tree, when it happens dead, if you take it, you cut it down, you dry it, and if you add a match to it, what happens? It catches fire, it releases all that energy. Right? Same as a battery. Carbon. Carbon is really important. So, I was doing some experiments one day. And up in the top right corner, you can see there's graphite in my left hand. That's a one form of carbon. It's an allotope of carbon, crystalline allotope of carbon. In my right hand is a stalk, a piece, which is part of the, the cannabis stick that I took to carbonize it into charcoal. Basically. In the cup is salt water from the ocean. And I ran down to the beach. Scoop up some water and run back to my kitchen. And then notice what happens when I put the two carbons into the salt bowl. The light turns on. See the top picture, there's no light? Bottom light turns on. And that's made from carbon. This is just pure carbon. So, two years ago, I get these things, I've been playing with all these materials over and over again for many years. And trying to find different ways of enhancing hempcrete. You know, I love hempcrete and I love biocrete. You know, plants, combine these. And so that's what this is here. It's basically taking the carbon okay, from the plant and I mix it with the lime, the same binder. Okay. Combine them together and then I discovered it had some conductive properties. If you look at the picture in the top part of it, it says 1.03, that's volts. Right? By making a simple kind of a battery here, I take the material that's a part right here. This is the carbon and lime together. Okay, you have the red lead that's here. That's my positive. There's a piece of toilet paper underneath as my separator. And then after that, there is the piece of tin foil. The same tin foil that you use in your kitchen to cover food or you cook it. Okay, just some salt water in between, and lo and behold, it was generating 1.03 volts. So that got me thinking. I said, "Well, that's pretty interesting." I said, "Can I store energy in my concrete walls or my concrete, or you know, all these different things?" I said, "I'll start experimenting." And so I developed this concept called BIES, Building Integrated Energy Storage. Now the idea behind that is you have solar panels on your roof or a wind mill on your field or whatever. Maybe even just regular energy that's, that's being generated. And you have this brick. I need these bricks. And this brick, okay, is hectic. And one brick there. And what you have there, okay, is 4.5 volts and about 4 or 5 amps. That's what's charging that tunnel. Now this can be designed to be any voltage. I designed that 4.5 volts so I can actually charge a tablet or a phone. So I first did this back in 2016, 2017, where I demonstrated this. People were coming up to the trade show and said, what is this? I said, it's kind of a heavy battery. They said, no. I said, yeah, plug it in. And then they charge up their phones and then run back to their truck. The idea here is using surface area of a building all of our spaces, you know, the floor that you're sitting on, you know, all this space, you can actually store energy. Imagine that, so 
think each brick, every one of those bricks was five volts. Count them all up. When you reach a thousand bricks, you got what? Five thousand volts that you can actually store in that wall. A grid cutter is the size of a stamp. So two and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeters, okay, two or three amps on that side of the space. Think of, now look at the wall just in this building alone. If you think two and a half centimeters, how much voltage and amplitude do you put across it? And yeah, no, you won't get electric here. You can walk up to the wall and touch it and lick it. You're not going to get stabbed. You know, it's protected by the materials that you're actually working with. Called the third egg of pain. So here's some examples of industry working in this direction. No, this is from the uh, University of St. Louis. We're doing something very, very similar as well. We're using different materials. Again, we're looking at the brick. However, they didn't get quite the energy capacity that I have with one doing here. But that's there. That's in 2020 that they produced. And then they produced, they, they published this in 2021. This is from Chalmers uh, in Europe. And it explains basically the same sort of concept where energy is going to be stored basically in the concrete right, of your buildings. It's the idea behind that. P-I-E-S. Now, some though haven't actually achieved some of the, the wattages or amperages that were there. This is going to come with time. It has more developed. Another interesting thing I discovered making some of these batteries, playing with this planet, I love taking this planet apart. This is an incredible planet, right? I think that there is really no other plant on this planet that can do what cannabis can. When you think about it, you know, the building materials, the clothes that we wear, the, the soap that we can make, the, the foods that we take from the, the everything, the medicine. There's no other plant, single plant on this planet that can do what cannabis can do. That's not called a fantastic plant. It's truly a plant. Okay. So CBD, everybody's heard of CBD, and everybody's, you know, talk about it, okay, this is more recreational, but actually, look at CBD from an industrial perspective. Okay, so there's three industries in cannabis. Okay, industrial, medicinal, and recreational. Okay, I don't recognize hemp or marijuana, it's, it's all cannabis, right? And this is industrial application. Of CBD. So CBD we can take, okay, it starts off as CBDA on the plant. Okay? Then they, they extract it from the plant, neutralize it, and then they have CBD. Right? Now you can take that CBD and continue and create delta 8, delta 9, all these other derivatives that come from that. But that's done in an acidic environment and exposed to air or oxygen. So that's one direction that they go with. Now, I decided to go in the other direction, the conversion. So instead of it into an acidic environment, we look at an alkaline environment, an exposure to the oxygen again. And this is what we get. It oxidizes to phenone. Now, unlike wine now, you'll actually see there's one there, it's called HG331. The phenones that are actually developed there are actually used cancer treatments. So you can take these CDDs, right, instead of looking at them in uh, an acid direction, or the alkaline from different things. Quinones, okay, and carbon, you already know make actually this fantastic battery. And you can literally make energy from that whole plant. I mean, tell me what other real plants can actually do that. You know, you get your medicine, you get your energy, you get your food, you get your clothing, everything. Truly incredible. So, what else makes cannabis really special? It's a C4 plant, okay? And trees are C3, in general. What does that mean? Well, if you look right up here, this is one of the key points in regards to Cannabis can optimize the production of carbon dioxide, pull it out of the atmosphere, any better than any other plant because it's a C4 plant. Those plants that are C4 have evolved right, to deal with higher levels of carbon dioxide. 
That's cool. Nature was already thinking about our problems 13 million years ago. Saying, oh yeah, but humans are going to come along and they're going to screw everything up. We're going to have to do something to get ready. Now guess what? It's right here. There's a solution. You know, you compare one acre of trees to one acre of, of animals. Look at how much carbon in the ice is going to capture by that plant. So we have all kinds of problems in our, you know, in our world outside right now. Right? Not just with this, but environmental. And this plant now is going to address right, a lot of the problems we, that already exist. We just have to know how to use this plant. It is a fantastic plant. So you know, four times as much, ten times, ten times. And that's an actually conservative number. I've seen numbers up to 20 tons per acre in 90 days. 90 days. That's how quickly we turn this plant on. Here in Costa Rica, you guys have been awesome. Canada, we only get one crop here, right? One. That's all, that's all the time they have to grow it because the rest of the time they get a lot smaller than you know. Here, you guys can grow this all year round. All year round. All year round. All year round. Awesome. You know, it's grown with other plants and intercrop, right? Where you're actually you know, using your soil with, with other things, like peas and you know, and cannabis together, actually tie up all kinds of nitrogen into your into your soils and peas and great soil. You know, we can intercrop, we can rotate crops with other things, maintain good social, uh, not social, soil health. Social health too, at some point, you get to that point. So I'm going to change the direction here a little bit. Well, I've talked a lot about the fiber side of things and some of the industrial applications there. But one of the really, this, and this is where I actually start, right? There's actually a lot of food sites. Food. You know, we have an acre of land. You know, what's the thing that we should actually be growing on that acre of land? Should we be growing it just for fuel, like you know, corn, for example, or food? You know? I love plants that you can actually do multiple things on one acre of land. Like I said before, you know, you can grow this crop to grow for seed, right, and grain, but then you can also grow it for the fiber, right? So we talk about the fiber, how about the food? So that's another thing in regards to this plant that I don't think a whole lot of people actually recognize. Is this here. Let thy food be thy medicine. And I medicine be thy food, the property, 400 BC. Thousand, thousand years ago, they knew it. Right? Like your food is what keeps you healthy. It's the food. You know, when you're healthy, you don't need the medicine because your food is your medicine. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. This is an expression I, I was taught when I was a child. You know, eating the proper food. All those foods that we have, apples, uh, broccoli, all these things, all kinds of incredible properties. But hemp is really, really cool ones that I don't think a whole lot of people know about. And one of them is Edison protein. So, it's a globular Edison, right? And it's the most bioavailable protein source, right? Think about that for a minute. You know, we need proteins, right, in our diet, not just starches. You know? This is a great protein food. You think steaks, I, I love steaks, don't get me wrong. I love eating meat. But at the same time, and this is protein for a lot of food. And this is why, you know, 60, 68% is obviously protein in that. And you think, so why he's talking? Protein. What does that have to do with anything? How does that do with food, you know, and medicine? What is that? You know? Well, actually, medicine protein is a major factor in DNA repair. Right? Really important. I think, you know, we think we always talk today about MRNA vaccines and DNA damage and, and all of this stuff. But actually, it was. Right? Correct the DNA damage. You know, so closely examined as a globular and blood plasma, they actually create blood plasma from 
there's protein. Because it's so close to these other things that are actually in the body. So, you know, like it says here, that's in protein produces antibodies, which are vital to maintain. But doesn't actually produce the antibodies, it helps to stimulate your body's own production of it, right? So that to improve and support immune health. So, that is in the antibodies. Now, my colleague, the very good friend she's actually the one that actually has put a lot of this stuff together in regards to nutrition. Aaron, I'm going to show you what do you think make it today? <laughs> Fight up in the United States with all the travel stuff. We'll be arriving actually tonight. So it should be around uh, the next few days. So here's some really interesting information in regards to us. Gotta perform the enzymatic okay, functions within the body. Okay. These things are absolutely crucial and essential right, to our health. And it comes from this plant. That is it. Comes from the seed of cannabis. Right? So, like it says here, the metabolism of the human body is filled with biosynthesizers, what? Hormones, hemoglobin, enzymes, antibodies. Just from eating a seed? Really? Wow. So, essential nutrients. You know, we're all kind of still talking about. Uh, you know, the, the CBD and the leaves, we'll think, oh, there's more of that, uh, those leaves. And, oh. no. What we should be thinking about is, as well is how do we eat this? Right? Instead of smoking. Right? Because look at what's actually packed in this flower. Right? So, I mean, in this flower, it's actually considered to be one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet today. Right? Look at the things that are in this. It contains essential fatty acids, nine essential amino acids, dietary fiber, right? Enzymes, vitamins, minerals, flavonoids, vitamins, cookies, phytocannabinoids. They're all there. All of them. From one plant. And one little tiny, tiny seed. You know? So. This is something I think is, is crucial. You know, why has it been eliminated from our diet for so long? I think in time, I've had a chance yet, but I think one day somebody will put together a list and say, you know, how many diseases could have actually been avoided if we have this actually integrated into our diet every day? Now, I want to think that THCA, okay, CBDA, THCA is non psychoactive Right? So you can have cannabis in the field with 1%, 2%, 5%, 10% THC, A, and as long as you don't heat it up, right, you're not going to get high. It's only when you add heat, it's called decarboxylation, convert that THC A, and then neutralize it, convert it, and change it into delta 9 that becomes psychoactive. When it's live in the field, it's not something like You can walk up here, grab that plant, put it in your mouth, you're fine. And you're not going to go trip it up. If you take that though and you put it into a brownie and you cook it in the oven, yeah, you're going to get a little hot. But this is something that I think is really important for people to understand, right? It's this part right here, right? In regards to that early stage development, what a lot of people don't actually realize is just that uh, during early pregnancy, okay, those successful embryonic passage through the OB duct and successful implementation okay, into the uterus require a critical embryonic control. Mananoma, phytocannabinol, found in where? In cannabis. Found in cannabis. Essential for life, right? We need these phytocannabinoids in our body. Women need these in their bodies. You see even more. And so I think it's, it's crucial that anybody saying that 
you know, this is a dangerous plant. We have to take it out of our society. Okay. It's completely local. Because from everything I read about, there's nothing but benefits from this. We need babies. Okay. So this is just one example of what other people around this world actually use this for. There's many others in Japan, China, uh, Malaysia, in Europe, all over. They have different ways of using this money in different ways. This is really kind of cool, right? Is that children, right? Mothers in, in South Africa use this, mix it up in their food, and it's to help wean their babies off the breast. Why? Because that globular Edison protein right, is so crucially important. Right? How many other proteins do you can actually feel? How many other plants do you can actually use? One, it helps with you know, your pregnancy. No? Two, you used to be the babies with healthy type of protein. Truly incredible, I think. And these are things that are essential to life. So, as I said before, raw cannabis, right? The flowers and seeds, you know, provide just about everything. You know, you have carbohydrates, protein, fat, water, vitamins, minerals, trace, you know, calcium, sodium, potassium, omega 3 fatty acids, compounds, blah, blah, blah. You know, all of this stuff. You know, he's in this plant. You know, we, we need to start stop thinking about cannabis again solely as medicine or recreation. Right? And we've already just talked about all the other things here. And really, I think you know, what the legislatures need to make aware of, right, is this should never go into what Canada made this mistake and they still have it registered and implemented on Health Canada. Makes no sense. Does anybody need to go to a pharmacy and buy an apple? No. <laughs> it should be under agriculture. Why? Right? This raw cannabis, right, takes it out of the medicinal domain and transports it into the nutritional domain. This is where it belongs. This is where cannabis belongs. Industrial cannabis is an agricultural crop, period. You, know, you, you, may, you, may, you have the decision to set up a decision for cannabis. Fine. This is agriculture. You want to do some other things with the regulation, you listen to more regulations to make sure that there's more use of those things. That's easy. We need to get past thinking about this as just a drug. We need to start thinking about this plan as food. This is essential food. As I've just shown you, I mean, proteins. We can't live without them. And all these other ways that this plant has clearly puts this into the realm of nutrition, into the realm of food, so that when you walk into a supermarket, you know, and you're going to buy your lettuce, I'm going to be able to walk up there and you can buy my cannabis inside the lettuce. People are going, oh! But my 12 year old will run up there, grab it, and sniff it. That's only if you teach them to do that. How many 12 year olds do you know run into the supermarket, buy all the potatoes, run home and make vodka? None. I've never read it. Why? Education. Right? Educate the young, educate the, the people. Education. Right? Potatoes, like I said, you can make vodka. I can walk out of here and go buy some potatoes. Take them back and throw them in my basement and make vodka. We don't do that. There's an education, right? We're taught tables of school. We need to teach people, okay, that cannabis is food. It's not drugs. Right? There's no reason to think about that. So here's more information basically. On raw cannabis, right? Some of these I've already mentioned before, like the THCA, CBDA. If we incorporate this plant into our daily diet every day, think about it. 
Right now we have all the therapeutics. We're thinking of taking CBD and smoking that every day and all this and blah, blah, blah. But if our body has access to this plant in its natural form, take it, put it on your salad, eat your salad. Guess what the body's going to do? It's going to use those chemicals that we provide to it in its natural form and use it however it needs to to help maintain your body. The endocannabinoid system can only get a lot of these ingredients from this plant. And just remember, endocannabinoid, right? Well, that's cannabis. THCA, CBDA, CBGA. These are all the natural forms that grow on the plant, the raw plant, right? If you don't cook it, right, and eat it raw, you're not going to convert those things into the more drug-like components. Your body will. But you're not going to be eating hundreds of pounds of this every day. Maybe there's some people that might. <laughs> I don't know if I would have pounds of this stuff every day. It doesn't have the greatest taste because turkey is a little strong. But, you know what I mean? There's, these things are all there now that the body can actually use it and correct for some of the diseases that are endemic within our, our society. If this became, you know, worldwide used everywhere else, I'm sure one day there will come out a study saying that this plant, this plant can correct for Alzheimer's, can correct for this, can correct for that, can correct for this, can correct for this, and that. I am absolutely sure that based on all the early evidence that we're actually seeing. So, this is back in Canada. This is actually Erin's backyard. She makes everything. Pestos. How many people like pestos here? Hemp pestos are great. You know, spaghetti sauces with cannabis. It brings out that flavor of tomatoes that you wouldn't believe. The flavonoids and all this. It's really relevant. You know, you eat this raw. Pestos are raw. You don't just take them to And then your body gets access to all these natural things. We'll, we'll just go in the yard. And this, this is a low, a low THC variety, right? So 0.3, you know, percent, you're never going to get high. Even if you cook it, you're not going to get high. Because it's, the CBD is much higher than that, right? There's always a balance. So, cannabis and COVID. So early at the beginning of this, this the COVID crisis, back then, uh, May, April, yes, April. University of Lethbridge in Alberta did some work and said, ah, you know, cannabis has a potential of combating COVID. You know, so that was the beginning of hearing about some of that. Very interesting. And talking about, you know, the ACE2 receptor and, and all that. And this is what studies are showing. And then this is just recently, right? And actually, what eventually actually happened. So they continue to, to work on this. And we'll do this University of Oregon, right? To continue doing some work on that. You know, and what it found was notice here CBGA, CBDA, right? Bound to coronavirus by protein, which allows the virus then to make it itself, right? It's a blocker, right? Similar to, to some of what is actually going on, not the same mechanism of action as, say, for example, ivermectin or Paxlovid, but it's down that line of thought in regards to how this stuff. This is not a, it's not a vaccine. It's a very different mechanism of action that's actually happening here, right, in regards to that. But it shows that cannabidiol inhibits SARS 2 replication and promotes post innate responses. Number two. Background's talking about Edison protein. Right? And Edison protein is doing these exact same things. So you're combining that with something that you know, is promoting that immune system, right? And eating the hemp seeds, right? It helps to build all those natural structures that you have in your body. And then you're introducing them, your CBDA to your body. Guess what? You've got a perfect natural defense, you know, to, to a food that's kind of fun. Like I say, it's a matter of it's a matter of time before we actually tell you that. Yeah, if you eat cannabis, you're not going to get cancer. 
I'm sure of it. There's going to be all kinds of things that come from this. It is truly a fantastic prize. Oh, that's right. That's what I called it at the beginning, right? So, take a look here. Pfizer, right? Everybody's heard of Pfizer, right? I mean, that's the that's the back, the back and all that. Guess what they did? Look how much they just spent on just that. They're betting really big on cannabis and that technology that's talking about for COVID. Six point seven million. That's a lot of money. You know? Again, that's gonna be for that like that says more of a CD stuff. Big pharma was now jumping this day. Five years ago they wanted to be close to this morning Today, right, people don't you know, say that's it in five years ago. Like, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just all, yeah, this is all this anecdotal evidence and blah 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 blah. You know, that would never happen. Well, Pfizer's taking cannabis really seriously. Six point seven million dollars, right? Let's look at the government and stuff. Right? You know, if I'm, if I'm a government, you know, I'm saying to myself, no reason why man should be legal. Now there's no, I have not heard a reasonable argument yet. You know, I hear everything in regards to, oh, the society will collapse, everybody will start smoking marijuana, they're all going to go crazy. Well, it was legalized several years ago and things are still working, so it's all fine there. So, you know, there's all kinds of arguments against cannabis, and this is why education is so important and how to move things forward, right? Knowing the truth and then spreading that thing. This is what I do a lot of times. I travel all over the world and I speak at conventions and speak at thank you very much by the way for your invitation here this this year. This is my first conference back in two years. Thank God. You know. I think COVID is the last way out and we're going to get going again. But yeah, two years. So, but the, like I said, it is so important, so very, very important that you know, we understand this thing and we take this forward, you know, and we show people. Here's the science, people. Here's the science. You don't need to worry about this plant. It's not going to make your children crazy. It's the you know, Here's the science. Thank you all very, very much.